Well, again, today for our second guest, it's going to be a little bit different kind of story, but yet nonetheless miraculous. Uh, sometimes uh, the miracle doesn't come like you just heard of Rodney and Cindy. Sometimes something else happens, but yet God's grace miraculously can get us through anything. Uh, I've often heard it said that God will pull you through anything if you can just stand the pull. And I know today uh, with our next guest, uh, it's going to really encourage you. If you've ever had a heartache, tragedy, pain in your life, and you've wondered how could I ever get through it, well, you're going to hear how right now. Let's welcome Kim Tiderman here with us today. Kim, so glad to be with uh, us today. Uh, you're one of one of our flockers here at Westmore Community Church uh, as well, and uh, with your uh, family. And uh, your story, again, I know is going to help so many people, because so many people uh, I know watching this program have experienced uh, what you've been through. Mm -hmm. So I just want to open it up and say, uh, share your story and, and uh, share what happened and share how you got through it. So let the, let the people hear. Okay, well, on May 17th, 2007, um, my husband and I, uh, we have three sons, and, um, you know, with multiple children, you take them this place, and I take them this place, and um, that night, uh, my middle son, Justin, who was 11 at the time, had two baseball games at Dell City and Michael was his coach so Michael took Justin to Dell City to his games and I took my oldest son Josh who was 15 at the time and my youngest son Jace who was six at the time to a Tuttle High School baseball playoff game in Shawnee. My oldest son really wanted to go and so we went and my little boy was crying because he wanted to go with daddy and he was going to let him but last minute he decided that no go with your mama because when I'm on the field coaching I can't watch you. He was only six so we went our separate ways and I text Michael throughout the game let him know how it was going and he called me and let me know how Justin was doing and then on uh, then we w I went home and um, about 10:18 that night, um, Michael called me, and he was on his way home. And um, Justin had pitched the game of his life, and um, he said that there were people behind the backstop watching him. He just, he drew a crowd. At, he was almost 12 years old, and he was already pitching in the low 70s. His fastball, and he just he was an a, an incredible athlete and he was telling me about his game and um, so I he said I'm uh, he's tired and uh, we're, I'm gonna get him something to eat then we'll be home and he was um, I-44 uh, southbound at the time and so um, Josh had already gone to bed and I went and laid down with my little boy to get him to sleep and I was tickling his back our little routine and um, then I w woke up startled I don't know what time it was maybe 11 15 11 30 or something right. because they weren't home right. Right. and so um, I uh, automatically was scared and I call Michael no answer right. and Michael was the type every little thing he did he called me and I kept calling and kept calling. I called the other coach. He said, no, he went home, you know. So got the boys out of bed, and we got in the car, and we, I'm like, we're going, we're retracing Michael's steps to Dell City Ballpark. Well, I was headed uh, northbound on I-44, and I was coming up on 134th Street exit, and I could see that the highway was closed down because there was a bad wreck. Mm. So I got off on the exit ramp and I circled around and the the on-ramp, um, I, I turned my car off and told Josh, watch Jace, 
ran up to the policemen who were blocking the on-ramp and I said, I think that's my family in that wreck. And um, he's and I proceeded to try to go through him and he stopped me and wouldn't let me go. And uh, he said, ma'am, just wait just a minute. So the other cop went to the car and radioed and then soon um, another car drives up and out comes uh, Michael's fire chief. Michael was a lieutenant on the Oklahoma City Fire Department for right. 17 and a half years. Right. And out comes two chiefs, mm. Chief Bryant and Chief Woodard and mm. the chaplain, wow. Chaplain Wilson. Mm. And I knew it was them then, you mm. know. So um, Chief Bryant was our good friend from Tuttle. W Michael and him were real close. And um, so anyway, I said, um, is it them? And he said, yes. And I said, is it bad? And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. And I said, are they dead? And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. And I said, both of them? He said, yes. Mm -hmm. So I just fell on the ground in the ditch of the on-ramp hmm. and I remember Chief Bryant was holding me and I remember beating on him and it was just an outer body experience and so then Chief Bryant had to go to the car and tell my other boys mm -hmm. and, and how old were they at the time? 15 and 6 right. And I remember him telling Josh and Josh breaking down. And then he came back over to me and he said, who do you want me to call? And I said, call my dad. So he calls my dad. Him and my mom were on a trip out of state um, for their 50th wedding anniversary. Hmm. So my dad has to drive all the way home from out of state hmm. knowing what had happened. but. He puts my dad on the phone, and I just became this 12-year-old little girl. And I was like, what am I going to do, Daddy? I can't. What am I going to do? Yeah. And he said, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. We're going to get through this. And I could hear his voice breaking, but he, at the time, he was my strength. And mm -hmm. so... I went home and I immediately had tons of people there around me. Tuttle, the community was unbelievable. The, um, they had walkathons, they had baseball tournaments. The Oklahoma City Fire Department had um, golf tournaments and everything went toward my son's college scholarships, which I'm using this year for my oldest mm. son. He's in his first year of college. Yeah. And, but my community just swarmed around me. And um, anyway, I, I couldn't talk on the phone. Um, so one of the things I started to do early on, my mom stayed with me for a couple of weeks, but then everybody wanted to know, how are you? And why mm. didn't she answer on her phone? And right. So my thing was I started emailing close friends and family, mm -hmm. and I would go in length of what was going on in my life and how my day went, good or bad, I was putting it on there, and I was reading many books about heaven and uh, trying to search for scripture for help, you right. know, mm -hmm. and comfort. And so um, I would put those in my emails, the mm -hmm. quotes from the books or scriptures I found that helped me. Right. And pretty soon I was getting awesome feedback, and the feedback I was getting back was so helpful to me and encouraging. And then it grew and it grew. People would say, my friend lost her husband mm -hmm. and... Uh, do you care if I share her emails with you? So my email grew to over a hundred people, people sharing my emails with people and my daily struggles. Mm -hmm. 
and um, but um, I immediately could feel God's comfort and peace. Mm. You're numb for a long time, but I, I immediately could mm. feel prayers for yes. me, and um, it it um, it gave me comfort. It, several things gave me comfort. Uh, one thing. I donated their organs. Mm -hmm. That gave me a lot of comfort. Mm -hmm. Michael and I had talked about that, mm -hmm. and we had talked about donating our kids' organs, mm -hmm. believe that or not. So yeah. I, that was a yeah. decision I had already made up. Right. So we did. I did that, and um, the I, people started writing me that I didn't even know through my emails, and they would say, "Tell me their stories," mm -hmm. and. I realized real early on that I'm not the only one in this world who's hurting and there are many, many yes. people who are suffering and not just by uh, death of a loved one but through divorce and through mm -hmm. uh, their kid was paralyzed or uh, just mm -hmm. suffering and I had a good friend that her mom died of breast cancer and she told me um, Kim, if you can get up every morning and go about your day, then I can too, you know. And so they were finding strength in me, and I was finding strength yeah. back from them. Yeah. And it wasn't long before um, uh, I was asked, I was speaking at churches and high schools, and mm -hmm. I spoke at high schools about drunk driving because the, um, yes, the, important to the car share. that... Mm -hmm hit them, um, crossed over the median and went airborne and came in the cab of their truck and they were both killed instantly and it was, they were drunk. Mm. And um, it, I was glad at least they were killed instantly. They died too, both of those guys. Yes. So, I mean, yeah. I've never been bitter toward them. How can you be? I mean, right. but... Um, the the emails for me were very um, therapeutic because um, I would just pour my heart and soul out into mm -hmm. those emails and just cry and tell, like I'd go over what happened in my day about, uh, Josh had a lot of support. He was going into his freshman year mm -hmm. and his football team rallied around him and at the time they were in uh, summer workout programs and if he missed they'd be there at the door mm. um, getting him and taking him and he didn't they mm. didn't let him miss mm. and they were swarmed around him but my little boy he shared a room with Justin mm. and of course I shared a room with Michael so he automatically just came to my bed right. and I held him many a night um, while he cried himself to sleep or mm -hmm. when he would wake up screaming for his daddy or his brother and after about six months he finally told me that he didn't understand they weren't coming home he thought they were in the hospital he right. was six yeah. he didn't understand yeah. and he just didn't understand why they weren't coming home and yeah. but um I buried Justin on his 12th birthday, mm. and um, we had a double funeral, mm. and it was a a life-changing ordeal, and um, it's the pain never, ever goes away, and people that have lost loved ones know what I mean. It never goes away, but you learn from it and you grow from it and you um, you learn that in that growth you help and encourage others yes and then that in turn yes was therapeutic to me that heal that was healing me um, by me helping yes. others mm -hmm. and my mother found that too her and my dad are real uh, involved in uh, feeding the needy and clothing them and stuff and she found that they just poured themselves into that and and that helped her too yes. you know to 
take your mind off your own suffering and put your mind on other suffering. Yeah. And but um, I want to say that one thing that I've learned through all this is um, my family, especially um, my boys and I, and my parents and Michael's family. You um, you look at life so differently. And the things that were so important before mm -hmm. weren't important. I used to freak out. Justin broke a thumb one time. I thought, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. what's his team going to do? And mm -hmm. how's he, how are they going to yeah. go to World Series yeah. without him? And I just think now how stupid was that? And, you know, it got to a point where um, when my kids would laugh, it would be just so joyous to me to finally see them laugh again yeah. and because for a long time you feel guilty to yeah, laugh, laugh or to enjoy right. life again and you feel guilty to go out to eat or mm -hmm. you have to learn how to live mm -hmm. completely all over again but I guarantee you one thing we never leave the house without telling each other we love each other mm -hmm. and you know my kids they still fight they're boys yeah. but they love each other yes. deeply and you you notice the sky mm -hmm. and you notice the mm -hmm. the simple little things in life that you didn't mm -hmm. before become really important you know uh, you know Kim it's just I think a lot of people again out that are watching this program right now can so much relate to you and, and I just want to make sure that they've heard some of these very important things of of uh, how you're getting through and you're getting through so well it's so remarkable I can't imagine can't imagine anything really worse in life happening lost your husband and child your son and uh, to be able to just be sitting here to talk about it but several things when, when people when this happens uh, some people they just cave in and mm -hmm. disconnect some people get real mad at God mm -hmm. and that's a normal thing to do but some people get very disconnected and disillusioned with their faith. And I think it's important with what you've said is that you, you kept your faith connected mm -hmm. to God. You, you got into His Word. Uh, you, you prayed. You, you, you got the, the people of God around mm -hmm. you to lift you up in prayer and to be there for you and to listen to you. Mm -hmm. And that as you shared with other people, you began to help other people, which in turn helped you. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what the Scripture mm -hmm. says. And I, I had a huge support system. My family is awesome. I had the Oklahoma City Fire Department. I had the town of mm -hmm. Tuttle. But, you know, I, I couldn't. There were lots of times I didn't want to get out of bed and I didn't want to go on. Mm -hmm. and, and I had compassion for the first time in my life for people that are alcoholics or abuse drugs because it numbs you mm. and the pain is so bad you just look for a numbing fact you yeah. look for anything that can numb the pain yes. but um, I found strength in in God I just felt the peace yes and I found strength in my family and um, I had so much more compassion for people mm. and mm. You just don't know what people go through yes. sometimes, you know. It's, it's so important for, for people to hear that, Kim. Mm -hmm. and, and I know it's encouraged so many people. I know today that there's a lot of you out there that can totally rate, relate to Kim's story. Again, listen, God loves you. He's there for you. He'll help you. He will carry you through, like Sean just sang earlier. The scripture I read, he will bring you out of the slimy pit that maybe you feel that you're in. Don't stay alone. Don't stay by yourself. Reach out to God. Get around a body of believers to support you and help you. And then serve other people. Help other people with what has happened to you. God can use to help other people. I remember T.D. Jake said a quote that I want to share with you that I've, I've shared many times in my ministry. is that God will make your misery your ministry. And it's so true if you'll let him. I think it's the difference between being a victim and being victorious. We can't control what happens to us in life, but we can control how we respond to it. You heard how Rodney responded and his family. You've seen how Kim has responded with her family. I just encourage you today.
Again, call in your prayer requests, 848-1400. Maybe this is one of the prayer requests today that can help you find a good church home. You're welcome to come to Westmore Community Church, a good home. We've, we have people there uh, that have been through it, like Kim. You're going to be hearing another story after hers like that as well. That We just want to encourage you today. Again, right now we're getting ready to hear another worship song from Sean Gutteridge. And again, how appropriate, the great I am. Mm-hmm. 